Hello there, my name is Elizabeth Ishola, the president and founder of Women on the Threshing Floor International Ministry. I have a strong passion to help you live again, to help you become all that God has created you to be. So it doesn't matter what your circumstances may be today. I tell you what, you can live again. You can enjoy life to the fullest again. If you are new to this channel, I'd like you to subscribe to my YouTube channel, like and share. Don't forget to drop a comment on the comment section below. To help us know how you feel about the program, you could even send us topics that you'd like us to talk about. Thank you. I'll be right back. Welcome back. In this month of July, the Lord said to us that is our month of abundant life. John 10:10. 10, 10, the thief has come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life and we may have it abundantly. We may have it till it overflows, till other people start to enjoy what we have. So today I'll be dealing with keys to abundance keys to abundance now abundance and increase in life are the natural results of walking in the promise and plan of god jesus said i am come that they might have life and that they might have it abundantly so progress in the kingdom of god or in any area is not accidental it is those who diligently apply god's principles for success who are rewarded with God's open hand of plenty. So many really want God's abundance in their lives, and yet they never do what God has said. They never do what God says they should do, because it is the doing that will activate that abundance. A man in the Bible named Jabez, Jabez, respected increase enough to ask for it he said oh that thou wouldest bless me indeed and enlarge my coast one version says and enlarge my territory and that thy hand might be with me and thou wouldest keep me from evil that it may not grieve me and the bible said god granted him that which he requested for many the measure of success is not how much you can get, but rather how much you can give and release to others. It is the amount you give that determines how successful you are. It is not how much you gather, but how much you can receive. So the simple truth is that you must be blessed before you can be a blessing. You must be up before you can lift another. You can create abundance from God in your future if you are willing to make changes today. So I'll be talking to you on the keys to abundance. One key to abundance is that you should put God first. Put God first. Because that's the purpose of your life. The worth of your life and the only way to fulfillment in your life is that you put God first. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, He says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All these things. So priorities are so vital to success in God's kingdom. He must have first place in your life for the laws of His kingdom to bring, begin to bring profits to you. He must have first place in your life for the laws of his kingdom to bring a maximum effect. There are so many things that clamor for our attention. Oh my God. Every time we wake up in the morning, so many things clamor for our attention. Before you know it, even the things that are not on our to-do list just show up and take away our time. Your jobs, they clamor for your attention. Your children, your spouses, your hobbies, the demands and distractions of life, they all clamor for our attention. But I came to say to you today that you should please be careful 
Be careful not to let them become more important or more of a priority than your relationship with God. God seeks fellowship with you. God will not tolerate anything becoming more important in your life than Him. So if you want abundance in your life, you must put God first. Look at the first of the Ten Commandments. It states, you will have no other gods before Him. That's in Exodus chapter 20 verse 3. God does not want any other God before Him. You must not make yourself an idol of any kind, an image of anything, whether in the heavens or on the earth or in the sea. You must not bow down to worship any other God because our God is a jealous God who will not tolerate your affection for any other God. But do you know that we worship other gods? We worship other gods and God is not happy about it. Anything can become a God to us. Anything we worship, anything we place above God can become a God. For some people, it's their husbands. Your husband is not allowing you to worship your God. He is first place. That's not the will of God. For some of us, it's our children. That's not the will of God. For some of us, it's even our makeup. For some of us, it's money. That's not the will of God. God wants to be put first in our lives. I'd like you to think about this question. What do you put an excessive amount into? What do you put an excessive amount into? Even your feelings can become a God if you allow them to control you. So, you need to ask yourself, am I bowing down to God and His Word or to my feelings? Are you amongst those who don't want God and His truth to interfere with your life and routine? There are so many people that will not allow God to interfere with their routine. They will not allow God to interfere with their life. For example, when you refuse to honor God and follow His wisdom in your decisions, it makes you to become bogged down with worry, resentment, and bitterness. Are you bitter? Are you resentful? Are you always worried? Is a sign that God is not priority. Guess what? All of these worries and anxiety, they show up as sickness and disease in the body. But the good news is this. We don't have to settle for this way of living. In Christ, we can enjoy our lives abundantly. As it said in John chapter 10, verse 10. So the first key to having God's abundant life, having his peace, having his love, having his joy, is keeping him in his rightful place in our priorities. God said to Abraham, walk habitually before me with integrity, knowing that you are always in my presence, and be blameless and complete in obedience to me. That was the word of God to Abraham in Genesis chapter 17 verse 1. God instructed Abraham to be habitual, to consistently work with him and live for him. Now, how do you do this? The same instruction is what God is giving you today. How do you now achieve this? Number one, daily habits of prayer. Pray daily. Don't pray once in a while. Don't pray when you're in trouble. Pray daily. Feelings irrelevant. Whether you are happy or not, pray. Because God expects fellowship with you daily. Worship. Worship God. Spend consistent time in His Word. Study the Word of God. I love the Word of God. It's amazing. Anytime I am down, I carry the Word of God. And I begin to read. And God comforts me. God heals me. God blesses me. God shows me the way from His Word. So please, stay with the Word of God. It contains wisdom, encouragement, comfort, inspiration for every issue, every human issue or dilemma. The Word of God brings peace. The Word of God brings stability to your spirit. And it will renew your mind. 
it renews your mind. So get excited about getting into the Bible. Anytime you want to get into the Word of God, get excited because God will surely bless you. Now let's look at it. What are the benefits of keeping God first? What are the benefits? Make it your goal to have a deep, intimate relationship with God. Let Him into every area of your life. You know, if you constantly look to other people for answers, you know, you constantly look to other people for validation, you know, pray about this and ask the Lord to help you to stop doing that. But instead, to look up to Him because He's the author and the finisher of your faith. Now, as we live to please God, He promises to bless our lives and make us prosper. When you decide to serve God with your whole heart and make Him first in your life, your soul will prosper. Your joy and peace will increase. So remember to lean more on God than you lean more on people. Because we can do nothing without God. He doesn't expect you to live for Him in your own strength. You know, you think it's by power and every time you are struggling, the more you struggle in the flesh, the more you fall, the more you rise. So God does not expect you to live for Him in your own strength or to live for Him in your own ability. He understands when you make mistakes. Don't kill yourself. Don't crush yourself. Don't criticize yourself. Don't insult yourself because you made mistakes. If you mess up, don't be discouraged. You know, get up confess it and move on confess it and keep going god will give you grace to do what you need to do one day at a time and god together can do anything you and god together can do anything in matthew 6 33 the barclay translation it says make the kingdom of god and life in loyalty to him the object of all your endeavor and you will get all these other things as well so when you make the kingdom of god priority every other thing will follow god says in jeremiah 29 verse 11 that I, he knows the, the thoughts he knows the plans that he has for you the plan is to prosper you the plan is not to harm you the plan is to give you a hope and a future what an amazing God we serve. I'd like you to trust God that He will make everything new for you. I want you to thank Him for all that He has allowed into your life. Be thankful. Every day you wake up, thank God for three things. You will not know, you will not understand the kind of joy it will bring into your life when you wake up every morning and you are grateful for three things. Three things that you, you even take your journal and put down. I am thankful for life. I am thankful. Just be thankful for at least three things. You can be thankful for much more. But make sure it's not less than three. Because if you look around you, you will know that God has been good. And I'd like to just declare over you that the Almighty God will lead you all the way in the mighty name of Jesus Christ and I pray that the Almighty God will guide your decisions and turn your heart to desire him above all else that's my prayer every time that the Lord cause me to desire him every time the Lord cause me to stay more in his presence to seek his face to love him and to love him is to do his will to love him is to love my neighbor so every time my desire is that I know Him, that I know Him deeper, that I know Him intimately, that I know the power of His resurrection. So I pray for you today that the Almighty will cause a hunger, a hunger for His presence, a hunger for Him, a hunger for Him being priority. May that kind of hunger sit deep in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I also pray for you that the Almighty God will open for you doors, doors that have been closed against you, doors of joy, doors of opportunities that have been closed against you, opens now in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you 
that the Lord will send you helpers. The Lord himself will help you. He is your Ebenezer. He will help you in the name of Jesus. So finally, I am still saying that you should put God first above every dream, above every desire, above every other thing. When you do that, you will have a glorious life and you will have a glorious future. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's such a joy to share the word of God with you today. And I want to invite you to Purple Conference. I want to use this opportunity to invite you to Purple Conference. Purple Conference 2022 is holding a discovery place. Discovery place in Gudu. In Gudu. I don't want you to miss it. If you are in Abuja here, please ensure you are there physically. It's for two days, the 29th and the 30th of July. Please endeavor to be there. The theme for this year's conference is enjoying your life. And the Lord spoke into my spirit that in this year's conference, there will be restoration. I don't know what you have lost in your journey. I don't know how long your journey has been. But God said it's restoring to you years that have been eaten up. God said it's restoring to you all that you have lost in your journey. So join me and other anointed women of God on the 29th and 30th as we unveil the will of God concerning your life for your next level. I'm expecting you and I trust you with there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, I've come to the end of today's topic and I hope you enjoyed it. I believe somebody has been touched by today's message. I believe you have made a decision to put God first in everything that you do. Please do leave your comments or your testimonies on our comment section below. And do you know you can continue to um, enjoy these nuggets and words of encouragement by subscribing to our YouTube channel? Please click on the notification button to get notified whenever we come online. Help us like, share, and also drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Remember, pray about everything and worry about nothing. Till I come your way again next week. And don't forget, I'm expecting you at Purple Conference 2022. Thank you and God bless you. Ciao.